looking at some moderate rain with some pockets of heavier rain around the Fort Leonard Wood area and southeast of Fort Leonard Wood. In this warned area, flash flooding is a possibility because uh, within the last hour to two hours, we've picked up roughly uh, two inches or so around the Rolla area, also about two inches near Fort Leonard Wood. Looks like we've got a pocket of heavy rain there also near Edgar Springs. Uh, this is just the eastern end of this line of storms. Also finding heavy rain now developing across Hickory County, west back into uh, areas around Nevada. And it looks like in here in St. Clair County, uh, between Osceola and Apple, Appleton City, you can see these green lines. These are outflow boundaries that are merging now. So the expectation is that we're going to find this area filling in with probably some strong thunderstorm activity. And with strong thunderstorm activity, you're going to get very heavy rainfall. So again, for at least the next few hours, areas along Highway 54 are going to get hammered with heavy rain and lightning and thunder and, and maybe even some gusty winds out of those storms. Also watching clusters of storms back here in Kansas. Pretty good cluster there moving through uh, Wichita. Also another batch coming uh, through areas south of Kansas City. This is an area that's been untapped by showers and thunderstorms. So there is some expectation that the storms that we're finding here in Kansas, they're probably going to try to maintain themselves overnight tonight. And we may see a cluster dropping southeast across at least the southwest corner of Missouri and in northwest Arkansas later tonight. The bottom line is it looks like while it is quiet right now in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas, we should find showers and thunderstorms spreading back to the south south and southeast later tonight and into Thursday morning. And with it will come the threat of some heavy rainfall and can't rule out the threat of maybe some severe weather in the form of strong wind gusts, especially again with activity that may try to organize here uh, across southeast Kansas and then push southeast across southwest Missouri, and northwest Arkansas. As far as uh, Thursday is concerned, I think the better chances for wet weather, and I do expect it to be a wet start to the day on Thursday. And for folks here in northern Arkansas, maybe north central Arkansas, where you may wake up to generally dry conditions, I do expect wet weather to move in during the morning. Once we get to the afternoon, we should find that threat of showers and thunderstorms focusing further south and out of the area. There will still be some lingering showers. Most of that's going to be light, though, and I think we'll find mostly cloudy skies and temperatures trying to recover back into the upper 70s and low 80s for highs. Here's our hour by hour forecast again, taking you through midnight. See how everything is lined up here on the model, and that's exactly what we're finding right now. Also notice what happens as we work past midnight tonight. That area of showers and thunderstorms dropping south and southeast with additional storms trying to come out of southeast Kansas across southwest Missouri, and northwest Arkansas. All of this that I just showed you may unfold a little bit faster than what the model is representing. Once we get past lunchtime, I do think we're going to see things tend to go more quiet with just a few showers around and mostly cloudy skies. As far as the rain is concerned, there could be a lot of it in places. And right now it looks like areas near Highway 54 and also possibly here along I-49 and west into southeast Kansas. That may be the sweet spot for heavy rainfall overnight tonight and into Thursday morning where we could find general totals of two to four inches with locally higher amounts not out of the question. Uh, in terms of temperatures, once we get the rain in, we're going to find those temperatures getting knocked back into the upper 60s. And then tomorrow, it's always tricky uh, with these, uh, you know, rainy type days that we find here in the summertime. Depending on how fast that rain moves out, that really dictates how warm you're going to get in the afternoon. But right now, given that it looks like it's sort of a front loaded event where most of the rain occurs in the morning and then it's mostly dry in the afternoon with mostly cloudy skies, maybe some peaks of sun. That should be enough to get us into the upper 70s and low 80s generally across the area. Now, I think the rain that we have into Thursday is going to have some weight on where the rain is going to occur Thursday night into Friday. And I think what it will do is it will tend to reinforce the front further south, which will be the focus area for showers and thunderstorms Thursday night into Friday morning. So I think for the next round, it will likely be areas near and south of the state line where we find most of the wet weather Thursday night into Friday morning with things going quiet again as we get into Friday afternoon. And some good news is I think once we get into the weekend, we're going to find some drier air trying to work in across the Ozarks. So we should find a drier forecast for the weekend. Uh, as far as what I'm expecting on Saturday, I shouldn't have scattered storms in there. I'm expecting maybe isolated showers and I'm expecting dry conditions on on Sunday for the most part with partly cloudy skies and temperatures starting to head higher. And look at the back end of that seven day forecast from 
cooler air moves mm. into the Ozarks as well. Yeah, and you, even you, what you can't see is beyond Wednesday. It looks like we could have an early taste of fall conditions. Uh, I'm talking maybe lows in the 50s and highs in the upper 70s and low 80s with low humidity All later right. next week going into Labor Day weekend. We'll keep an eye out for that. Viewers Club number, Jamie. The viewers Club number for tonight is 130366, our jackpot $500. All right, thanks, Jamie. Well, Springfield Public Schools has brought on a new member to help promote diversity and equality throughout the district. We really want to make sure that we are representing this community in every way that we possibly can. We will tell you more about the new SPS Chief Equity and Diversity Officer coming up right after the break. Making local interest tonight, Springfield Public Schools is adding a district-wide chief equity and diversity officer to its leadership team. Ivania Garcia Pusateri will be moving into this position on September 9th. She comes from her role as executive director of multicultural programs at Missouri State University. Stephen Hall with Springfield Public Schools says the district is happy to have her on board with her experience. What stood out about Ivania is her um, commitment to this work. She is a demonstrated leader. She's very passionate about the work, about serving the needs of all of our students and really bringing people together, which I think is so important in this work. Prior to her three years at MSU, Garcia Pusateri held a leadership role in diversity affairs at Miami University in Ohio. Well, Evangel University is striving to make reductions in energy and water usage on campus. Now they have a little bit more money to help out. The university received a grant for $300,000 from the Sunderland Foundation in Kansas. The money has helped the school upgrade nearly 800 lighting units to LED and two halls on campus. Plumbing fixtures were also updated thanks to that money. More than $26,000 in savings are projected from those improvements. In political coverage tonight, today Governor Parson announced a special session coming up to address car sales tax allowances. The special session will begin on September the 9th and run along with the veto session. 
It will focus on amending a state statute to allow the sales proceeds of more than one vehicle to be used as a credit against the sales tax owed on the purchase of another vehicle. The Missouri Supreme Court recently clarified in Kellen Brink v. Director of Revenue that sales proceeds of only one vehicle may be used as a credit. However, during this special session, the legislature may amend the state law to allow for the sale of multiple vehicles to be used as a credit. Well, the amendment would line up with the Department of Revenue's prior practice and what consumers have come to expect. House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid calls the special session unnecessary. In a statement released on Facebook, Quaid cites health care coverage and weak gun laws. Quaid, said, Quaid says, quote, there are several issues that demand immediate legislative attention and would justify the cost of a special session. Creating another unnecessary tax break for a handful of people is not one of them. Well, still to come tonight, no one likes getting stuck with a flat tire, right? Nope, it's no it fun, but you won't believe the lengths one man went to try and fix one. That story is next. Well, a California man goes to some pretty incredible lengths to try to fix a flat tire, and he ended up in jail because of it. So mm. he tried to fix his flat tire with Band-Aids and gauze, and you'll be able to see a close-up of it here <laughs> in a minute. And police wow. pulled him over. Yeah, you can see his little patch job right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Police pulled him over and uh, found out that the man was on drugs, apparently, <laughs> and took him to jail. And... Jamie, you're, you're a handy I was, man. You, I was just going to say, the problem is he's using the wrong tools. He should have been using <laughs> bubble gum and duct tape. Everybody knows that fixes everything. Bubble gum and duct tape, so good not, to know. Not Band-Aids and gauze. Yeah. That's all he had, Jamie. Maybe he didn't have the right stuff. We'll be right back.
Now, forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. All right, watching some heavy rain right now along Highway 54. That's exactly where we have a flash flood watch in effect through tonight into tomorrow morning. Two to four inches expected across that area. Locally, higher amounts are possible, and we've got some flash flooding, which is ongoing right now. We have some in Pulaski and Phelps County, and we've now recently seen storms fire up from Nevada northeast across areas like El Dorado Springs. Very heavy rainfall here has prompted a flash flood warning that's in effect through 345. Radar estimating, oh, upwards of two inches in places there with more rain falling. And you can see how everything's lined up now along Highway 54, and that's expected to drop back to the south later tonight. I'll have more on that in your forecast coming up. Color 2 News at 10 starts now. Now, from Ozarks First, you're watching Color 10 News at 10. Well, school is back in full swing now at Missouri State University this week. Campus is flooded now with those trying to get to their classes on time. Good evening once again. We're glad you're here. I'm David Oliver. And I'm Jennifer Abreu. And parking has been a hot topic for a student over, uh, over the years at the university that is growing in numbers. And our Jesse Inman took a closer look at this issue, and he is back here now with more Jesse. Yeah, guys, lately definitely has been on the minds of students with the university currently under investigation by the state's attorney general's office for an alleged parking ticket quota. Now, the school declined an interview today on the topic of parking, but they are fully cooperating with that investigation. So we took a look at some of the numbers for parking there, and we heard from some of those who were jockeying for position on the first week of classes. It's just the same problem every year. The first week of school is, you know, everyone's here. Everyone's actually excited to go to class for the first couple of days. So that means everyone goes and it's not enough parking. As a junior at Missouri State, Michael Lassman lives off campus and makes a commute to school every day. In his first two years, he learned an important lesson. If you're trying to get like a really good spot, it, you'll have to pay for it. And if you end up parking in a spot that you don't pay for, you will most likely get a ticket. So honestly, it's not good to take any chances with parking at Missouri State. Some evidence to support that claim is in the amount of parking tickets the university has issued over the past few years. According to data provided to us by the university, since the 2014-2015 school year, MSU has written over 96,000 parking violations, which has resulted in almost $3 million in fines assessed. I always park at Bear Park South. Like, that is really the only thing I'll ever use for a class because it's convenient. The problem with that, everybody has that idea. The university encourages people to try parking on the north side of campus, including Bear Park North. <laughs> um, I'll say the biggest thing is just to be patient. <laughs> Wise words from grad student Robbie Smull, who uses the often emptier north garage to his advantage. Um, I try to. Um, I can normally find parking here a little bit quicker um, because it is a little bit further away from the classroom buildings. Um, I can generally find one. It's more reliable. You, you're not going to park there and walk the class because you'll be walking for at least like 10 minutes. So. On days like this, you'll be sweating by the time you get to class. You just look like you came out the shower. Now, a parking permit costs students $121 for the full year, and students will generally be given a pass to park in these yellow zones here. But if you're tired of fighting for a parking spot in these more popular areas and near the heart of campus, the university suggests a few of the lots on the north side. You can see some of these rainbow lots are authorized for yellow zone parking. Of course, You'll have a nice walk ahead of you as those are about a mile away from campus. And you can get this map in this story on OzarksFirst.com. Good advice tonight. Jesse Inman with us here at 10. Thanks. Now more education coverage. Evangel University is now striving to make reductions in energy and water usage on campus. And now it has more money to help in the effort. The university received a grant of $300,000 from the Sunderland Foundation in Kansas. The money has helped the school upgrade nearly 100 lighting units to LED systems in two halls on campus. Plumbing fixtures were also updated thanks to that grant money. More than $26,000 in savings are projected now from those improvements there at Evangel. And new at 10 tonight, a state law protecting large corporate farms from county health ordinances has been put on pause. Senate Bill 391 would allow confined animal operations or CAFOs to set up shop in local counties without any restrictions at the county level. But this week, a Cole County judge temporarily blocked this new law. Yes, Stone and Taney counties have already passed health ordinances now preventing the CAFOs from coming to town. But our Crystal Blair spoke with one state law Maker who believes those against the CAFOs are uninformed. Here's the bottom line. If you don't want to be 
in an area where there's meat, milk, and eggs raised with manure don't live in the country. Republican State Representative Warren Love says those opposed to CAFOs are out of touch. A lot of consumers, and I'm going to call them consumers that live throughout the state of Missouri, do, they are so out of touch of the way of modern day uh, production of meat, milk, and eggs is, they don't understand the modern day production methods. But concerned county residents argue that CAFOs will cause contamination from animal waste seeping into the water supply. They're concerned about their water. They're concerned um, they do not want happen to happen in Taney County what happened in Arkansas in the Buffalo River. Taney County Commissioner Sheila Wyatt says the soil composition in the county is different than in northern Missouri. Water runs right through the rocks. We don't have that much soil. And the water ends up into the water table, into the lakes and the streams. They're given antibiotics to keep them healthy because they're in a very confined area. Um, they're fed uh, grain with growth hormones in it. They are required to not let that manure move from that location to adjoining property. The bill that was set to become law on August the 28th will be on hold until a hearing September 16th. In Branson, Crystal Blair, Ozarks First. A lawsuit was filed by county boards in Cooper and Cedar counties, as well as two property owners and friends of responsible agriculture. 22 other counties in the state are also considering health ordinances that would prevent CAFOs from coming to their towns. Also making news now at 10, some Missouri power customers could soon see higher rates. Liberty Utilities has submitted a rate increase request to the Missouri Public Service Commission. Now, Liberty operates Empire District Electric. The commission has 11 months now to review this request. If approved, it would mean a roughly 6% raise increase, or rate increase, I should say, per month for residential customers who use about 1,000 kilowatt hours. Liberty Empire has not asked for a rate increase in four years and says it's invested more than $330 million in system-wide upgrades since 2016. Keeping crime in focus tonight, the indictment of a former doctor at a veterans hospital in Arkansas is sending shockwaves through the nation's largest health care system. Dr. Robert Levy is accused of involuntary manslaughter in the deaths of three patients, and he may be responsible for the deaths of at least a dozen others. Omar Villafranca has one widow's story. It got to where there at the end he couldn't walk. Kathy McCoy's husband, Michael, died late last year. He was a grandfather of 10 and a proud retired Army sergeant. In 2014, he went to an Arkansas VA complaining of a pain in his leg. So they kept on saying it was arthritis? Arthritis. What did it end up being? A blood clot in the leg. McCoy's case is one of thousands under review after Veterans Affairs pathologist Robert Levy was accused of involuntary manslaughter and the deaths of at least three veterans by misdiagnosis or falsifying their diagnoses. Those are the three cases that we feel confident that we can take into court and get a conviction. He was chief pathologist at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center of the Ozarks for more than a decade. 1,003, 1,004, 1,004. Levy can be seen in this police body cam footage said to be from a 2018 DUI stop. It was released by a law firm representing some of the alleged victims. An 18-month Veterans Affairs investigation into more than 30,000 cases under Levy's supervision found 3,029 showed errors or misdiagnoses and concluded they may have led to at least 15 deaths, some from cancer. I think there at the end, he knew they had failed him. McCoy is buried here at the Fort Smith National Cemetery, but his family wonders if a proper diagnosis could have saved his life. In a statement, Dr. Levy says he is innocent and plans to defend himself vigorously in court. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Fort Smith, Arkansas.
Now to political coverage here at 10 today. Governor Mike Parson announced a special session is coming up to address car sales tax allowances. The special session will begin on September 9th and run along with the veto session. It will focus on amending a state statute to allow the sales proceeds of more than one vehicle, trailer, boat, or outboard motor to be used as a credit against the sales tax owed on the purchase of another vehicle. The Missouri Supreme Court recently clarified in Kellenbrink versus the Director of Revenue that the sales proceeds of only one vehicle may be used as a credit against the sales tax owed on the purchase of a new vehicle. But during the special session, the legislature may amend the state law to allow for the sale of multiple vehicles to be used for that credit. This amendment would line up with the Department of Revenue's prior practice and what consumers have come to expect. House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid calls this special session unnecessary. In a statement released on Facebook, Quaid cites health care coverage and weak gun laws. In fact, uh, she says, quote, there are several issues that demand immediate legislative attention and would justify the cost of a special session. Quaid says creating another unnecessary tax break for a handful of people is not one of them. Moving on to weather now. The rain is moving in to the Ozarks, but just how much rain will we get, Jamie? Well, areas to the north, it looks like we're going to see uh, maybe a few inches in many places and maybe several inches in some places, and that risk of heavy rainfall will be moving back to the south and southeast overnight tonight and into Thursday morning. It looks like a wet start to our Thursday. I'll have more on that and how long we can expect this wet pattern in your forecast next. Now, weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Well, earlier today, the heavy rain threat was down to the south, near and south of the state line. Now we're finding the heavy rain threat has shifted to the north across central areas of the state, and the showers and thunderstorms are now lined up right along Highway 54, and it looks like they're probably going to persist in this area for a few hours before we see more of a movement to the south and southeast. And because of that, there's going to be that threat of flash flooding, and we have a flash flood warning in effect right now. This is for areas uh, from Nevada east across El Dorado Springs. Doesn't quite get into OC Osceola, but Osceola, you guys are getting some heavy rainfall right now. The worst of it, though, has certainly been in this area where we had a merger of outflow boundaries generating some intense thunderstorms and heavy rainfall. Right now, looking at rainfall totals likely on the order of two to three inches already. 
within parts of the warned area and heavy rain continues. Another area where we're finding heavy rain setting up right now is across Warsaw. Uh, it looks like this is probably going to persist for maybe another hour or so uh, of the magnitude that we're seeing right now before that rain starts to wind down. We're also looking at showers and thunderstorms. You can see how they're sort of merging over this area here in southern Morgan County and northern Camden County. So we're setting up some heavy rainfall here near Lake of the Ozarks. We've had heavy rain across Pulaski County and Phelps County where we have flash flood warnings that are ongoing right now. And there are still pockets of heavy rain in here. Uh, radar estimating as much as three to four inches of rain has fallen at least in a few places within that warned area. And there's additional thunderstorms off to the west here across parts of south central Kansas. This is an area in here that has really been uh, free of rain through today and this evening, so it has not been worked over yet. So we've got some untapped instability that may aid in some thunderstorm development uh, later on tonight. As it stands right now, it looks like what we see here on the map will gradually it'll it'll kind of continue to fire where it is, and then over time it'll start to march more to the south and southeast back across southern Missouri and eventually into northern Arkansas, I think by sunrise tomorrow morning. So while it is quiet currently over southern Missouri and northern Arkansas, I do expect thunderstorms to move back in later on tonight after midnight. And uh, that's what we're going to start Thursday off with uh, a very wet scenario across much of the area. Now it looks like those showers and thunderstorms will start to fade and the uh, the uh, focus will begin to shift further south as we get into the afternoon. So the afternoon hours are looking drier with mostly cloudy skies and just a few sh leftover showers around. Here's our hour by hour forecast, and it looks like this is a little bit slow generating the scenario, but it's got the right idea. You can see showers and thunderstorms line up in the area where they're already lined up now. And then after midnight, see what happens is we find that activity sagging back toward the south and southeast with additional showers and thunderstorms likely filling in from southeast Kansas back into southwest Missouri and northwest Arkansas during the morning hours. And then that activity shifts out and it looks like fairly quiet weather conditions setting up during the afternoon on Thursday. And there will probably even be maybe a few peaks of sunshine that will push temperatures into the upper 70s and low 80s. As far as rainfall right now, it looks like areas near and just to the north of I-44 and possibly here along I-49 will be the sweet spot for very heavy rainfall overnight tonight. Again, two to four inch rainfall totals may be fairly common within that zone and locally higher amounts are going to be a possibility. Yes, I do expect some heavy rainfall south of I-44, but it's going to be more localized in nature. Temperatures tonight. Once we get the rain, that'll cool temperatures into the upper 60s and then temperatures tomorrow really dependent on how long that rain persists. Right now, I think again, we'll see things quiet down as we get into the afternoon and with some peaks of sunshine, we'll see highs in the upper 70s to low 80s. Another round of showers and thunderstorms expected Thursday night into Friday morning. That activity will probably focus a bit further south, closer to the state line and south into northern Arkansas. And as it stands right now, I think we're going to get some dry air in here over the weekend, but I have seen some model guidance that says the opposite may occur. So we'll have to wait and see how this weekend actually unfolds. So a complicated scenario. Mm -hmm. Maybe rainy day tomorrow. Good day to stay inside and take care of a newborn baby, right? Right. It sounds <laughs> like who? Like Heather. Oh. Yeah. We're going to show you some pictures of the baby. We got those today. We're going to share them coming up later tonight. So we thought we'd let you know. Stay tuned for that. Yes. So, yeah. so we'll have those pictures later. But for yeah. now, viewers club number, Jamie. Yeah. And that number tonight is 130366. Center jackpot is $500. All right. Well, still ahead at 10.